Good morning. How are you doing this morning? It's one of those mornings. Long night, rough night, low sleep. Don't know why. Just one of those times. Having a good time though. Wake up, read a little bit of God's words. Read in Revelation, the first chapter. Just a wonderful verse. Because you know all this stuff that's we're experiencing the, the monotony and in all of this, it's just kind of nice to see things that um, are pleasant from time to time, isn't it? In the first chapter there of Revelation, John is giving his introduction, and um, when he gets down to verse 3, he says these words, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophet prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Wow, the time is at hand. It, he says, blessed are the people that read this, that hear it, that follow it, that, that keep the things that are written herein. You know, the Bible has blessings for those that read it. And we are definitely in the last times. And I realize there's people that are they're saying, well, COVID-19, this is the mark of the end, this is the mark of the end. That, that's not what God said. We are in the end times. In fact, when John wrote um, his his epistles, uh, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and 1st John, he said, beloved, now are we in the last days. So we've been in the last days, at least since uh, John and I'm and, and, and basically since the cross, this marks the last days. This is the last uh, theme before the, the end time events take place. And those are just around the corner. And, and listen, this is not a, a doomsday kind of thing. This is a great thing. This means that we're close to the end. We're close to when uh, there's final judgment on Satan and his angels. And we're done with this. Uh, but there's a lot that's got to happen between now and then. But there's a lot that's happening right now. Things that are telling us we're at the end. You know, Jesus said there would be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in the first places. And, and more importantly, he, he repetitively used the term when the fig tree begins to bloom. And that's always been a reference to Israel. Basically, he was telling us when Israel's in her land, she's surrounded by enemies. This is the time. If you follow the prophecies in the Old Testament and you tie those with the things that Jesus said in the New Testament, we see that all of the players are in place. All of the people that the Bible listed that would be end time players, the different nations, those are all there. Those are all um, in their right places. They are they're doing their things. Israel is in her land. Um, he said that the desert would would bloom. And just today I was I was reading that Israel has had so much rain that they, they've already had their annual rain by now. And they're actually looking at a, another 21 centimeters, I believe it said, of um, of, of rise in the Sea of Galilee. They're going to have to open floodgates and and relieve the, the Sea of Galilee because of the because of the pressure on the, on the dam and everything else. And so, you know, if you look at Israel today, it is lush. It's beautiful. Um, they are growing all sorts of things. They are doing amazing things there. And, and it's just like the Bible prophesied that in the last days, this is what was going to happen. It, she's definitely surrounded by her enemies. War is definitely threatened. You have people like... Uh, nations like Iran who have, who have threatened the total annihilation of Israel. So all of these things that are supposed to be as marks of the end are here. And listen, Jesus said and when he was on the earth, he told his disciples, look, you, you can't know the day and the hour. Only the Father knows that. And there's a whole teaching behind that. In fact, there's a great video out uh, that is that is um, it's called "Before the Wrath." And, and listen, if you haven't seen it, you ought to watch it. It really gives some great detail about this end time stuff and you know, some of the significant things that what Jesus said. And um, and I just encourage you to get that and watch it. It's just really a great video. But you know, he said that here's here's the things that are going to happen and. And we are in the end times. We are we are close. Israel has discovered the Temple Mount is being cleared. It's that they're they are doing all sorts of things. They're wanting to do the sacrifice this year. You know, last year was the first time since AD seventy that that a lamb has actually been slaughtered on the Passover by the priest in, in all the properness. And and this year they're trying to be able to do that on the Temple Mount. They have they've already built a a, a carriage for the altar so they can actually lift the altar onto the Temple Mount and 
and, and secure it and do the offering and be able to remove it. And I mean, it's just amazing things that are going on. And he said, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written for the time is at hand. He said, you can't know the day and the hour, but you can know the season. You can know when it is nigh at the door. Paul talked about the rapture, the next main event that is to come, the catching away of the church. And, and he said, listen, it's going to happen. Christ is going to come like a thief in the night for those that are unaware. But he was talking, he said, to you who know and understand and follow these things, this won't be like a thief in the night for you because you're watching. Are we watching? Do we realize the time we live in? Do we realize just how close to seeing Christ that we are? I, I was I was reading it. I was just really enamored, I guess. I, I, I love the way the Bible phrases things. I love the descriptions the Bible gives. And I like John when he's in his first chapter when he talks about he hears this voice behind him. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And, um, what thou seest right in a book, and, and, he, and he gives him these things, he, and he listens, he says, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. He gives a description of what he saw of Christ, and he says at the end, and, I, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And he goes on to tell him like he's got the keys to, to death and hell. And, and he says, I want you to write these things down. I want you to write letters to the seven churches in Asia. And, and he goes on and the rest of Revelation just, is just more exciting from, from that point on. But what I'm saying is, you know, John got to see him. And he tells us in 1 John, he says, we don't know yet what what we're going to be, but we know this, we're going to be like him because we're going to see him as he is. We are very close to seeing him as he is. We are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, caught up together with him in the clouds and there to be with him forever. All these wonderful, wonderful prophecies. But folks, I don't think we as Christians realize just how close we really are. You look at the things happening one of the major, one of the biggest pieces of the of the last week, that tribulation week, is the worship in Israel being reestablished, the the temple being rebuilt, and and the temple worship being reestablished, and now we have all the foundation for that. We have the original location. It's being excavated. Get, get on the news. Get on. Get on. The, behold Israel. Get on something and look and just look at what all has been done on the Temple Mount. It is so significant that right now with the coronavirus, others are coming in and they're they are stealing. They're digging in. They're trying to destroy the Temple Mount. They're taking artifacts, and it's getting it's getting really wild over there. We are near the end, Christians. We need to be about the Father's business. We need to be about telling people about Jesus Christ. And we need to be getting ourselves ready. I ask this before we go this morning. Are we ready to see Jesus? Now, I know most Christians go, oh, I'm ready. I've trusted Christ. Are we ready? We're saved, but are we really ready to see Jesus? When we stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ and, and what we've done in this life is laid bare and, and is determined whether or not you know, we have a reward, are we ready for that? Are we really ready for that? What are we doing to get ready? Are we reading? Are we meditating? Are we studying? Are we praying? Are we taking time with the Lord? And are we telling others about Him? Are we ministering to people around us? Are we trying to reach the lost? Are we reaching out to help those that are in need? What are we doing? Are we ready to see Jesus? Folks, it is a breath away. We are almost home. But it also means we're out of time. We have precious little time to accomplish the things we need to do for Jesus. So what are we doing for God? Are we ready to see Jesus? Because it is here. It's time. I don't know how long these last days last. I don't know how long it's going to be. The Bible says we can know the season. We can know when it's nigh. It is nigh.
So let's be diligent to serve the Lord. And let's do that this week. Whether we're writing letters, sending texts, calling, or dropping off groceries to somebody, let's make sure that this week, today, we're serving the Lord. Don't forget to keep praying for your um, uh, representatives and to save those of you who are doing that. And unity, please don't forget to send in your, your tithes, offerings, your faith promise things. Please mail those to our P.O. Box 1001 um, Duncan 73534 because it's the post office box. Please send in your tithes. We still got to pay bills and all those kind of things. Those of you who are already doing that, thank you for doing that. Uh, just stay with it. We we just uh, love you. I miss you. And um, let's go to the Lord. Father, thank you for the joys and the excitement that you give us. Thank you for your promises to return to come and get us. That where you are, we will be with you. And we are, we are grateful that you are a God of promises, a God of faithfulness. That you never fail to do what you say. And we know we have all this history to show your faithfulness. And that what you say is absolute truth. And so we know because of that, Father, that you are coming again soon to catch away your bride and, and begin this last week of Israel's history. And Father, we're just excited about it. We, we are looking forward to it. We know that that means we're close to the time when Satan is not available any longer to tempt or to create problems. And we are so ready for that. And more than anything, we just long to see Jesus, to see him with our physical eyes, to touch him with our hands, to be able to bow at his feet and to worship without distraction, without any sin, all oh, to be sin free. We just can't wait, Father. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, do good with Jesus today.